Hi guys, it's Robbie Wannis with UrbanFarming.com and in today's video I want to show you how we go from you know just some arugula seed to this nice full tray of arugula we have here. So first things first is you're going to need some soil. So this is the soil we use, just a pro mix, kind of all mix and you get it at Home Depot Canadian Tire, works really well. So we do have to prepare our soil, so I'll show you guys that now. But the problem with this soil, guys, is in this, you know, compressed kind of bag. So it's kind of, you know, it's got all these clumps in it and that. So if you were trying to prepare your 1020 tray and breaking up these clumps to get a nice flat bed to spread your soil on, it's rather difficult. So what we do is we run our soil through the soil sifter, which is just a... You know, it's got some two by fours, some deck boards, and some quarter inch kind of chicken mesh. And it just allows us, I'll move our camera to show you. So it just allows us to run our, kind of break up all these clumps. And then it'll kind of screen our soil, gets out any twigs or anything like that. So you can see on here, you know, there's all these little twigs. And that's just nice because if you had these on the surface of your bed, for your 1020 tray, like your soil bed. None of your seeds are gonna germinate against that wood. So it's just another added benefit. And once you're done screening your soil, you can see, you know, just how nice and fluffy this soil is really easy to work with. So now that we've got our soil prepared, that's kind of all we do. We'll prepare our 1020 trays. So I'll show you guys that. So per 1020 tray, we're using three liters of soil. So we just got this, you know, three liter beaker. And that's all I do. So it just makes it super quick. You know, you're just filling up your beaker then you dump that in your tray. And then once you got your three liters of soil and your 1020 trays, I guess I should show you how we set up our tray. So because we bottom water the arugula, you want to have your trays, you know, a 1020 tray with holes sitting on top of a 1020 tray with no holes. So when you water, later on you'll see, we can just lift up this tray, put the water in the bottom, it'll soak up through those holes. So that's how you want to have your trays set up. And then you just kind of move it around with your hands to get it. It doesn't have to be super level because you use your soil tamper to press it down. Once you got your beds, you know, kind of level, they're not perfect by any means. You guys can see, I'm just kind of spread out roughly with my hands. We'll then use this soil tamper, just a piece of plywood along the bottom here with the two by four. And then we just push it down to make a nice flat bed. And then once that's done, we just put our hose on the shower setting and then we'll just water our trays. So now that we've got our trays all prepared, we can measure out our seed. Per 1020 tray of arugula, we're using 25 grams. So I'll measure out 50 grams, and this is seed is just from mum sprouting. So I've been really happy with them, great to work with. So I'll measure this out, 50 grams. So 
So 49, that'll be good enough. And then when you're spreading your seeds out on your soil bed, we just use kind of a broadcast method. So you just use a spoon. And I just kind of go around. You just want to try to avoid any clumps. If you so guys, that's kind of, you know, what you're looking for. It's kind of all evenly spread out. So what I'll do now is I'll do this, our second tray here, and then I'll show you guys the next step that's really made the biggest difference in the quality of our germination. So here's what it looks like, guys. We got both the trays done right there. And now this next step is, you know, we want to mist our, our trays before we stack them. So we just put our hose on the mist setting and then we'll mist them. And this has by far made the biggest difference for, you know, improving our germination rates. So I highly recommend you guys do this. Just get your seeds wet. I find they'll uh, germinate a lot better. So now the next step, guys, is we'll just, uh, you know, stack our trays. And what I'll do now is I'll, you know, take these in the grow room. And I'll show you guys how we set them up for the germination process. Talk to you in a bit. Hi guys, so now we're in the grow room, so we got our trays stacked here. And you just got a 1020 tray with no holes, you just set it on top. And then we just put these five pound bricks on top of the trays. This works out about 15 pounds. And then we'll just let it sit like that. So then this tray is now kind of pushing the seeds against the soil. So it'll help improve your germination rates and just kind of make a thicker stem, stronger microgreen, help improve your yield. So that'll wrap up this little bit. I guess I can show you the temperature in the grow room. So right now the humidity is 35% and the temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll talk to you guys in 24 hours. We'll come here, take the bricks off. And I'll show you what the arugula looks like after germinating for 24 hours. Talk to you guys in a bit. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 24-hour update on our arugula. So I'll give you a quick update on our grow room conditions for the last 24 hours. So right now the humidity is 37%, the high was 42, the low was 41. We're at 82 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 82 degrees, low was 73. And then we've got our arugula down here. So I'll just take these bricks off and we'll see how the germination process is going. Never actually seen that before where the soil sticks to the bottom of the tray. So that'll be interesting what happens. Usually I don't pick these trays up at all, but so they are starting to germinate and they look, uh, you know, really good. I don't know if you can see on the camera. Yeah, you can. You can see how that big kind of clump of dirt stuck to the tray. So yeah, we'll see what happens. That's uh, very interesting. But when I'm usually germinating, these crops, I just leave them like this the whole time and then, you know, they'll start to come up along the edge and that's when I know they want to be unstacked. So, it's kind of what we'll watch for. It's kind of, you know, this is a short, quick little video. And then what I'll do is I'll probably give you guys another update in 24 hours for a 48 hour update. And we'll see what they look like then. So, the arugula is a pretty quick growing crops, so I'm sure we'll see some big changes and um, yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to see all that, you know, that little clump of dirt that stuck to the trailer. I've been doing this for two years now and never seen that before, so that'll be interesting how this all plays out. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you in 24 hours for a 48 hour update. Talk to you then. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 48 hour update for our arugula. So I'll give you a quick update on the grow room. Right now the humidity is 35%, the high was 40%, the low was 32. We're at 84 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 97, low was 79. So it was hot in here yesterday. You know, for most of the day it was closer to that, you know, 90, 95 range. So you can see along the bottom here, you know, the arugula is really, it's kind of telling us it wants to be unstacked. So we'll take these bricks off. Just set them up here. We 
we'll see if that uh, you know that dirt's still sticking to the tray but no so it's not too bad you know it actually went back in the soil the roots probably got a bit of a root structure to keep the soil down there so these actually look like they can be unstacked so they're looking you know really good really happy with that so what I'll do now is I'll uh, get my camera set up and then I can show you guys you know us putting them under the lights the first auto watering and then kind of how we set them up by the fans and everything so I'll talk to you guys in a little bit Hi guys, so got our trays, you know, they're under the grow rights here for our arugula. So I'll show you guys how we water them. Try to get a, you know, fairly close up for you. So you can see, you know, in this tray, there's these little ridges. Your trays might have some. Most of the tray designs I've seen do have them. So what I do is I fill the water up just to kind of cover these little ridges. So get our watering can here. When we bottom water our arugula, I just found it really helps decrease, you know, any mold issues. We're not getting the kind of full foliage of the crop wet or anything like that. Keeps it nice and dry. It's made a big difference in, you know, just the quality of our arugula. So there's the second tray. And now what I think I'll do is I'll kind of go over our grow room setup. So you can see we've got this fan here. You know, you always want to have really good airflow over your crops. And what you don't want to do, as you can see, you know, we've got an extra tray of kale there. So I'll just move this just to show you quick. Just so it makes it easy to understand. So what you wouldn't want to do is, you know, have your trays set up like this, because you got your your fan, it's blowing air over your arugula here because it's, you know, the canopy is shorter than the canopy of the scale crop. The scale crop is so tall that, the, like, the airflow, there's going to be no airflow over top of, you know, that tray of arugula. So you always want to have your, you know, your shortest crop's canopy, I guess, closest to the fan. You can see up here with our basil, it's very slight, but you can see these two are shorter. And then we've got our basil there. And then, you know, down with the alfalfa there. So, hope that makes sense, guys. That's one thing, you know, I see some people, they do have good airflow, you know, throughout their grow room, but they're still having mold. And then when I look at kind of the sequencing of their crops on their shelves, that's one mistake people make. So another thing, if I back up a bit, you can see on that one, you know, we've got four fans there. So right now that bottom fan won't be on because we're germinating those crops, but these three fans are on most of the time, well all the time other than when I'm filming, and it's blowing the air kind of in this direction, which if we come along this way, we go into this corner of the grow room with those two fans, which are blowing the air down to our dehumidifier down here, and the exhaust on this dehumidifier kind of pushes it out this way, which then pushes it to this fan, which is then back to, you know, these three fans here. So what I'm trying to accomplish is kind of have a circular pattern of airflow throughout the room, just really good airflow. You know, the air is constantly moving around and it's really helped us. So if you're gonna grow, you know, arugula microgreens, you need good airflow over the canopy of the crop and you're gonna want good airflow throughout your grow room. Then another thing is you're gonna probably want a dehumidifier. You know, our humidity is constantly in that 35, 40% range actually don't think you can get the humidity too low. I guess I'll kind of look how I'm holding the camera for this. But yeah, I, I don't believe you can get the humidity ever too low. Like what's going to happen when it gets even to 20, 25, you're just going to have to water more frequently because your crops, will be, like the soil will be drying out that much quicker, but there's no problems that I'm aware of from, you know, too low of uh, humidity. It's when your humidity gets up high in the you know, 70 to 80, 90 percent range you're gonna to start to experience more mold issues. So it's one thing, you know, you want good low humidity. So a dehumidifier in your grow room. These are, you know, the grow lights we're really using. Actually, I'll show you this top shelf. So per, you know, I guess a shelf, if we call this one shelf, there's two T5 lights 
And what I really like about these ones is so we got one plug right here running to the power outlet down below I'll show you. But that one plug whoops, then connects into you know this light, which then comes along and connects into these this light here on the back end. You can see this cord, which then connects in to this fourth light. So you got one cord, you know, down in our kind of multi-prong unit there that's plugged into the, the wall. And then so right now on this shelf there's you know, 16 lights being ran on four cords. So I've had other light setups where, you know, each light has its own cord. So that would be, I guess there's, you know, four shelves on this one, four on that. So I would have eight cords. So this way I've kind of gotten rid of four co cords. It just makes it a lot nicer. You know, it looks a lot cleaner. And what I like about these is when you're taking pictures for your marketing, it's very clean looking. Like you just focus on the microwave crops. There's no big lights kind of hanging down. So I'm really happy that these are, you know, they're relatively cheap. You can get them off Amazon. I mean, they grow great microgreens. I don't really get in, I'm not gonna get in too much about the light spectrum or anything like that, but these ones definitely work and they're good. We're on a 16 hour on, eight hour off cycle. And it's just ran off this uh, light timer right here. And you know, the only bad thing about this light timer is it doesn't have a battery backup. So the power goes out, you know, and right now it's 10 o'clock. Power goes out for an hour. It'll still think it's 10 o'clock when actually it's 11 o'clock. So your lights will just, they'll still stay on for, you know, 16 hours, eight off, but they'll just be turning on and off at the wrong time. So that's, I mean, I've been using those for two years now or so. Super happy with them. And, you know, I highly recommend them, but if, you know, if you want, precise control that your lights are always going to turn on and off at the same time and not have to come readjust that when the power goes up maybe a battery backup one would be good to get what else so we got our lights we got our airflow we got our dehumidifier right there it just drains into this bucket before we just had it kind of draining into its own little i won't open it but its own little tub there and what would happen is, is that tub would get full and then it would just shut down and our humidity would creep up. So this is kind of our second step. We just got to drain it into this big you know, chicken bucket, I think it is, or something like that. And we've been using that, but ideally we'd have it actually drained into the piping system. So that's kind of something we're working on as we continue to expand. Because then I've never have to empty that bucket. It would just go right into the you know, sewer system and it would just run would be perfect kind of gets rid of one task we're always constantly doing so i think that'll wrap this video up because you know all the equipment and everything that uh, we use i'll just have a link below in the description that will take you to a page you can you know all the fans and all the lights and light timers and multi-prong units all that stuff will have on one page so if you guys are interested kind of copy our setup for something that works really good you know it'll be easy for you guys so Thanks for watching. I'll give you guys another update in, you know, 24 hours. It'll be cool. Pretty cool to see. The arugula will be all greened up and, you know, look really good. So, yeah, we'll talk to you guys in 24 hours. And Hi, guys. So, welcome back. This is our 72-hour update for our arugula. So, I'll give you a quick update on the grow room. The humidity right now is 36%. The high was 40%. The low was 32%. Temperature is 88 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 91 and low is 81. And I'll, you know, I'll get my camera set up and I'll show, show you guys bottom watering the arugula. So here's what it looks like now. You know, the soil is pretty dry. It's starting to kind of fall over there, fall over there. So it definitely needs some water. So that's what we'll do. Give it some uh, water. So I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so I got my camera set up. So and then let's get, so we got these little ridges here. It's kind of what I always go off of. I just put the water in there. So it kind of covers those ridges. Just let that soak in.
and that'll uh, you know wrap this video up. We don't do really anything else. I'll just turn the fan on so we got good airflow over it, and then I'll talk to you guys in you know another 24 hours. They sure greened up, eh? Like from just being under the lights from the yellow color when we unstacked them to 24 hours. It's pretty impressive. So we'll talk to you guys then. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our 96 hour update, I guess day four update for our arugula. So give you a quick update on the grow room. You know, right now the humidity is 41%. That's the high. The low is 29%. 81 degrees Fahrenheit is our current temperature. The high was 100. The low is 79. So if you can see outside, you know, it's, it's quite wet. It's raining. So I imagine that's why the humidity is creeping up. And we've been watering. Like we've, I mean, the water is probably the main big part because you can see all the trays we just unstacked and we watered the basil over here so kind of a combination of factors that's uh, you know creeping up the humidity but here's our arugula so it's looking really good you know it's nice and green there's no mold it's it kind of looks like a carpet almost like just how thick and dense it is and it was actually closer to the fan but, you know just unstacking this broccoli here it's actually shorter than our arugula and the radish is taller, so kind of what I was talking about. You always want good airflow over the canopy of your crop, so the root is now here. And you know, there's good airflow over all the crops. So I'll just put my camera down, and then we'll give them a quick bottom watering. Might be a little bit difficult because they're kind of tucked in here tightly, but. So you can see, just kind of a couple of the ridges aren't covered on the corner there, but this tray is kind of on a bit of an angle just because of the hooks we use for our lights. But that's kind of how much water we're putting in. You know, the roots are really nice and white, they look pretty good. So everything's looking good with the arugula, and we'll just leave it now. And the lights are on a 16 hours on, eight hours off cycle. Oops. So yeah, that'll kind of wrap this update. Up, I'll talk to you guys in you know another 24 hours, I guess for our day five, 120 hour update. So I'll talk to you guys then. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our five day, I guess 120 hour update on our arugula. So the humidity was quite high; it's still quite high, but we're at 63%, uh, and the high was 87%, low was 59%. We're at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 82 degrees Fahrenheit and low was 72. So I did have this window open when I first came in because it's at 87%. You can see the humidity on the window. So what happened is I imagine yesterday when I was leaving, I forgot to turn the dehumidifier back on because I, I shut everything down for you guys, like the fans, dehumidifier, so there's no kind of background noise or very little background noise in these videos. So I must have just forgot to turn it back on. And then when I came back now this morning, 24 hours later, it really crept up on me, but Arugula is still looking great as you can see, you know, it's just like, yeah, I really like the way the arugula looks like it's nice and thick, it's, you know, it's dense, it's even when you touch it, like it's, yeah. So, if you can see the soil, I'm not sure if this camera can go in that close, but you can see kind of how dark it is, kind of one thing I'm watching for, so it's still a lot of moisture. Let's see if I can pick this tray up for you guys. It's a little difficult with one hand holding the camera, but... You can even see in that tray there's still quite a bit of moisture, you know, at the bottom. So, soil is still good and wet, and that would be because, you know, if your humidity is at 87% and your temperature is in the low 70s, you're just not going to have that much evaporation kind of out of your soil. So, I don't think we'll need to, you know, water today. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on it. I'll come back tonight because we're going to be harvesting tomorrow. So, I don't want to, you know, starve the arugula for water. And then it's kind of all falling over because it's you know it needs some moisture, needs some water, and then it makes it more difficult to harvest. So if it's still looking good tonight, 
I just won't water it and then we'll harvest it earlier tomorrow when it'll be good and dry. So yeah, this, uh, what else I guess? Oh, the lights. So, you know, all our lights, they're always on 16 hours on, eight hours off. So if, you know, if there's any videos that I forget to tell you what the light schedule was, it's always, you know, 16 hours on, eight hours off. We never change it. So that's what these lights are on in the last 24 hours, 16 on, eight off. So, and that's what they'll be on for tomorrow's update too. So we'll talk to you guys in 24 hours and we'll show you how we harvest our arugula. Thanks for watching guys. Hi guys, so welcome back. This is our day six, 144 hour update for the arugula. So here's our grow room update. Right now it's 45% the humidity. The high was 56, the low is 45. We're at 91 degrees Fahrenheit. The high was 93, low is 86. So these lights are on a 16 hours on, eight hour off timer. And today is actually our, you know, our harvest day for the arugula. So you can see, you know, how this one got a little too dry because it's all falling over. So there's no need to worry when you see that, you know, just come and give it a watering and it'll be standing back up. So what we'll do is I'll probably harvest from this tray and then I'll show you guys har us harvesting this tray later on once we're done today. But just wanted to show you guys that because I think it's, you know, it's something I see a lot of people run into. So get kind of worried, like why is, why is it all falling down as you can see? compared to, you know, this tray is all still standing up. So just give it a good bottom watering and then you'll see, you know, later on this afternoon when I harvest that tray, to show you guys the process, it'll be standing back up. So thanks for watching guys. And we'll talk to you this afternoon. Hi guys. So welcome back. We got all our harvesting done for our subscription deliveries. I'll give you a quick update on the grow room. So right now it's 45% humidity. The high was 56. The low is 40, we're at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the high was 93, and the low is 86. And uh, these lights are on 16 hours on, 8 hours off. So I'll just uh, get my kind of everything set up and I'll show you guys the harvest process. Hi guys, so we got our arugula set up on the table now. I mean, you can just see how nice and, you know, full that looks. Looks really good. This is our kind of tub I'm going to use just to measure our yield. So I'll turn that on. Scale zero. And with all our microgreens, we use a knife. So we got this, you know, this knife here, this knife sharpener. So we'll get this set up. And then we just always sharpen our knife between every tray. We don't use like scissors or hedge trimmers or anything crazy like that. Just a good sharp knife. And then it actually takes me, you know, a little bit longer to harvest a regular just because it's really, you know, like a delicate kind of small microgreen. So I take a small amount, just use the knife. And then same with our other microgreens, you know, it'll just become a habit for you guys too. I'm always looking, you know, is there dirt in there or anything like that. So I'll just put it in here. best part about, you know, I find arugula is one of them, basil is one of them. The whole room will kind of take the, the scent of uh, arugula when you're harvesting. It's really quite something. It's quite enjoyable. Okay guys, so maybe I'll show you a little bit more. One more pass and then I'll probably just, you know, harvest this tray and then show you guys our final yield. Just because you'll be here for, you know, five to ten minutes just watching me do the same thing. So you can see, there's a good example. Just that one little piece I tore out there, so there's some dirt right there. So that's kind of what I'm watching for. Just always thinking about the customer, you know, they had that sprinkled on top of their eggs. And they're kind of like, what's that? It'd be a piece of dirt, which wouldn't be very enjoyable. Not how I'd want to start my day. So I'll uh, pause this video. And then I'll see you guys once I got this tray harvested. Okay guys, so there's our tray. You can see it's all harvested. You know, not a super clean job by any means. There's still some there, but our final yield came in at 166 grams. So pretty happy with that. And yeah, that's kind of all I, you know, just kind of go slow with it and make sure there's no dirt or anything like that on the bottom of them. You know, you get a nice clean cut. You're not tearing them out of the soil. One thing I'm always watching for, so. And for the arugula, 
you know, I kind of put a little bit in my smoothies, a little bit in salads. I find it's, if you know what arugula tastes like, it's actually even kind of spicier than that. So I can't really consume a large amount of it. I just kind of sprinkle it on everything. And yeah, so that should wrap, you know, this gross series up. I'm happy with how this all turned out. So if you guys, you know, if you have any questions about growing arugula microgreens, just leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure I try to help you guys out and answer every one of them. If you have any tips for me on how to grow them better, I'd love to hear them. I'm always looking for ways to, you know, improve our yields and increase our, you know, our margins per 1020 tray and that. So if you guys would like to, uh, you know, I'd appreciate it and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Every Monday I plan on doing kind of like a microgreen Monday type video where I teach you guys or show you I guess how to you know how I grow my microgreens and hopefully that'll help you guys you know grow your microgreens a little better so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys in the next I guess grow guide talk to you then